Hi, I'm Margaret Harris, Reviews and Careers Editor at Physics World Magazine. I'm here in San Francisco talking to Dr. Andreas Tuneman, Director of the Fraunhofer Center for Applied Optics and Precision Engineering, about ultrafast fiber lasers in manufacturing. Andreas, can you tell me a bit more about ultrafast fiber lasers, how they work, and how they differ from other solid state lasers? Well, these, these are type of lasers are completely different to any type of other lasers because uh, you have a unique geometry. Uh, that means that the light is propagating within a waveguide structures, whereas in conventional lasers you have uh, optical components to be aligned on a table and you have some kind of free space optics. This can be completely avoided in these type of lasers uh, we are talking about. That means these are inherent, robust uh, lasers to be used in different application areas. Okay, they, they've traditionally been used mostly in scientific research, but we're seeing more and more applications in manufacturing. What's your take on this trend? Up to a few years ago, we ha have had the situation that uh, it was necessary to have a physicist in the laboratory uh, to operate an ultrafast laser. And due to the most recent development in laser technology, especially in ultrafast fiber laser technology, it is now possible to use these lasers in different application areas, like manufacturing. And the main advantage, of course, is uh, that uh, you have systems uh, which are completely sealed uh, with respect to the environment, meaning uh, that you can operate these systems even uh, in a manufacturing site uh, where you have very different temperatures uh, and dust conditions, for example, uh, so that you uh, can use these lasers uh, for real-world applications. Besides manufacturing, what other, other applications do you see coming across for these lasers? I think a very important area is the field of ophthalmology. So um, if you look for the uh, human being, we have the situation that the vision of the eye is changing uh, when the people are getting older. And uh, using lasers, ultra-fast lasers, it might be possible to change the optical properties of the lens, which allows, in fact, for a uh, better uh, vision even for older people. As this technology progresses, what role do you s think that fundamental science will play? Well, the, um, there are fundamental limits, in fact, uh, which uh, are important uh, for the scaling of these lasers. And one important subject is the so-called nonlinearity within the fiber. If an ultra-fast uh, pulse is uh, propagating within the waveguide structure, then uh, we can observe nonlinear effects resulting in the pulse uh, breaking or we can see that uh, there are changes uh, within the propagation conditions or that there is uh, some uh, problem with the fiber itself. And in order to overcome this, we have to uh, develop novel uh, kind of waveguide structures. For example, photonic crystal fibers, meaning microstructured fibers, uh, which allow for the compensation of these nonlinear effects, even for high peak powers. So you've talked about this a little bit already, but what are some of the key challenges that need to be overcome before these lasers are adapted more widely in manufacturing? Well, I think an important uh, topic, in fact, is that uh, we have to scale the power of these lasers. Especially, we have to go for high average powers, but also higher peak powers, uh, because uh, for the application of the lasers, it is important uh, that uh, uh, we can uh, apply these lasers, for example, for drilling with high average powers. Uh, high average powers means reduced uh, cycle time within the drilling process. So that means we have to make the lasers within the production more cost effective. You're a physicist and head of one of the world's best optics labs. What are you and your colleagues doing right now to work on some of these challenges? Well, we are working on a kilowatt uh, ultra-fast laser, uh, meaning uh, that we are developing novel type of fiber geometries uh, which allow for an efficient pumping uh, of the fiber lasers uh, using diode lasers, for example. But we are also uh, working uh, on the um, increasing of the peak power, in fact, uh, to overcome uh, current limits uh, of these type of lasers. Thanks very much for talking to us, Andreas. I appreciate your time. Thank you.